Welcome to the My Name is Human or 2.io podcast brought to you by My Name is Human Pod.com. I am Human Haiti. I am Human Kangi. And I am Human Snoke. And we have the Bold Combo with us again, the first time on video. Welcome, okay. Combo. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm so to uh, be back. What is it, the third time now? Third time. First third time, time on video and uh, two other times where it's audio only. Uh, we appreciate you coming back. We have a big topic to talk about today. We're going to really just get right into it. We're going to get into is Earth 2.0 a scam? And we're going to say why Earth 2.io is not a scam. So, you know, no, get us started here. Yeah, definitely. So lately, Earth 2 has been it's been under what seems like a coordinated attack almost uh, from YouTube content creators uh, of late calling it, calling it a scam, uh, specifically, um, you know, labeling it and blasting Earth 2. Uh, we're going to evaluate some of the points that they bring up. We're going to evaluate why they um, might be wrong or not. And then also we're going to talk about a little bit more as well with uh, the bull combo on. Yep. And one thing I do want to make clear is we are not pay, uh or 2.io is not paying us for this. We are doing this on our own volition. We don't make any money from this, and we're not financial advisors. This is not financial advice. Shout out Randy Chavez. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just piggyback that really quick and say that we are invested in this. So take you know what we say with that in mind, because we are biased people, just like it seems like we may be dealing with that on the other side. So For sure, for sure. I mean, we all have a vested interest in the game, but I'm just right. making it clear, Earth 2 is not paying us for this. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I want to talk to is about the team. There's been some question marks about, uh, is this a one-man operation? Is this Shane Isaac, and is he sitting in his basement just counting up dollar bills? Uh, not, that could be nothing further from the truth. Shane thought of this vision two years ago. He's been working since then to kind of get it rolling. He brought Nathaniel on. Nathaniel Dolerson, the lead developer on, uh, before anyone else. Uh, he brought him on before the release in November. Uh, so they've been working together kind of with the, the concept and idea on the head. So let's talk about Shane Isaac. He's the managing director and founder of XYC Social Media, which is actually a pretty reputable social media company. Uh, he is not the owner of a scam media and telemarketing company and never has been. And that's almost to the point of being offensive. Uh, and he owns 50% of Earth 2. He does not own it all. So there is uh, more to the story than just Shane Isaac. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But he doesn't have an in-depth background in, in, in gaming, so to speak. But he is an innovator. He has looked at businesses. He knows how to kind of get the ball rolling. So tell me, Combo, what you think Shane's role is and how his role kind of lends to the credibility of Earth 2. Well, I mean, obviously, first and foremost, I think people put a lot of weight on what you've done previously. Uh, and I think that you have to remember that there's a lot of times someone tries something for the first time just to see what they can do. You know what I mean? And then after they've gotten their feet wet, they'll reapproach that in a more serious aspect and in a more serious way. And I do really think that in a lot of ways, what Shane did before Earth 2 was his, his learning process, his learning to run companies, develop an idea, carry it from an idea all the way to a company. So I think he's obviously really important to the uh, to the development of the platform itself. And I think that there is too much weight put on him and his ability to just run away with everything, I think, because that's, that seems to be something that's referenced quite a bit. And I just think that there's too much weight put on that because it's not just him at this point that, uh, that's involved in this. It's a pretty large team with a pretty large set of reputable backgrounds. So yeah, it just doesn't make I, a lot of sense for that. I, I think the fact of some of the people he was able to recruit speaks volumes to that past experience. Precisely. He was able to bring on Dylan CEO. He was able to bring on Wolfgang Walk. He was able to bring on Nathaniel. The fact that he was able to bring these people in speaks to his experience in business. Uh, the, yeah. And the, the partnership he had he, with uh, Tony Mary, he wouldn't have been able to do that if, if he was just a nobody. Exactly. So I think exactly. people kind of throw that away. Go ahead, Kenny. Yeah. I, I mean, I, for me, um, I know that his background is a bit unconventional when it comes to game development, but you see this in many industries. It happens within uh, the industry that I work in, which is kind of financial service adjacent. 
where sometimes you bring in folks from an entirely different realm that have shown that they can lead a team or that they can lead a company. And maybe they're not from the same type of background, but they have those leadership skills and that past success that makes them uh, a decent potential fit for that role. So even though, again, from a video game development background, I, I understand why those you know folks would be skeptical of, of Shane. Um, I think that his career successes and frankly attaching his name to it shows that you know it's not a scam. These people are staking a lot of reputational history on this. Um, and it's very easy for other people to assume that one is willing to risk the rest of their free life not in prison for committing wire fraud. You know, you sign that check. I don't think Shane is uh, somebody that's willing to take that sort of risk, right? Uh, yeah, he has a wife and kids. He said that before. He's like, he's exactly. not risking his reputation on that. No. Yep. So, but, but I mean, is there anything else to say about Shane or should we transition to, you know, one of the other people that I think folks are really excited about? Well, let's get to Wolfgang because, I mean, when we talk about the game itself, people are like, well, but what game? Well, here's Valid. a person who has 30 years of experience. Uh, Combo, you know a little bit about Wolfgang, so kind of get into what you know about Wolfgang and why you're excited about what he brings to the Earth 2 development team. Well, I know for a fact he has well over a decade's worth of gaming development experience, um, and specifically with games that happen to focus on resources and build trees and things like tech trees and things like that. And I think that just to kind of circle back real quick to the whole Shane topic, and I think it kind of ties in here, uh, when you're creating a company like this, you don't want a person creating the company that knows how to develop the game. You want to know, you want someone creating the company and running the company that knows how to delegate and find the right people yes, to run your game. Yes. So uh, that is the part that I, that really excites me about, you know, Wolfgang being involved is, is that Shane clearly knows who he's looking for and is going for high caliber uh, individuals that have the capabilities to do what he's trying to do. And I think that should be more telling than anything, not, not Shane's history or his background, just who he's going after and how he's delegating this and making sure he's bringing the right people in that can handle the right parts of the platform. And I think that's the most important thing highlighted here. And I think Wolf Games is a perfect example of that uh, with his development experience, with his decades of, of game development experience. And I think he'll, his skills will lend really well to what the Earth 2 platform is trying to do here, especially with the resource gathering, with the uh, the secondary economy that they're basically trying to develop here. So that's my thoughts on it. Yeah. And Snoke, did you, I mean, it sounded like you wanted to jump in with a little bit to say about Wolfgang. Like, is he a personality? I know for some folks <laughs> in the discord, he's a personality at, well, we can get to the strong personality components, but I was going to say that his background is one of those backgrounds that gives a lot of folks confidence. I have heard multiple right. people say that they are invested and continue to be confident because of Wolfgang's involvement. Um, is that something that you yourself kind of agree with? Is he one of the people that keeps you around? Yes, between him and Nathaniel both. I mean, the thing is, I, I try to uh, have people actually watch that uh, original video where all the uh, devs were on, on their Earth 2 uh, YouTube page. Um, and even just listening to Wolfgang talk, I mean, you, you can tell, like, he, he's straight to the point. He's not, like, he's not, he it doesn't feel like he's trying to bullshit, you know, bullcrap you or bullshit you or anything like that. So, right. um, I, I like how his, his demeanor is pretty much, but also, like Bull Combo said, I mean, he has decades of experience. And it's something that, that's what you would want to see when you invest into a game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, one of the things I like about Wolfgang is he is sarcastic and he'll tell you straight out you're you're full of shit yeah uh, he's abrasive to some but i think his confidence <laughs> and his background uh really give a lot of people faith in what he brings to their two team he hasn't really been on the discord much lately and that's because he's working yeah he's busy as hell uh and i think snoke since you mentioned him i think let's transition to you know the third member that we know gives a lot of folks confidence which is Nathaniel Doldersome, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing that name incorrectly, um, but uh, he's he's the lead game developer. So you know, I'll start with with the bull combo. What do you know about Nathaniel's background, and why is he somebody that would give you faith in this project? Well, I actually know a little bit more about Nathaniel's background, and I think just because I was digging into the uh, terrain editor quite a bit well, before we saw any details about that, so. I think the only thing we really had to go on in terms of ideas was some of the stuff that the previous the devs had done previously. So I was looking into some of the stuff that Wolfgang had done, and specifically Nathaniel, and seeing his work on drone, 
Um, now I know the game itself drone was very like, it was very much a crowdfunded game in a smaller aspect and it had a lot of lofty goals. It came to fruition and there's still a lot of things that probably need to be updated about it, but it's very much in the same vein as like, uh, as XYZ for for Shane, when it comes to like that stepping stone, you have to do something first to get to that next level. So from that perspective, seeing what Nathaniel's done between, you know, the one-to-one model of the planet, the, uh, the graphical, just the graphical fidelity of drone. And then if you guys have seen the world builder, the terrain editor for drone, I mean, that is absolutely, yeah, that's that was, <laughs> platform looks like that was actually work. my first experience. I didn't actually look into Nathaniel until like two weeks after I got here right. and I went and like went down the rabbit hole and watched, went to Nathaniel's YouTube and we'll link Nathaniel's YouTube in the show notes along with Wolfgang's Moby and kind of have a little resume for them other than their LinkedIn's, which are kind of vague. Uh, right. th- there's a lot more out there for those two, but his world builder is the the basis for what he's going to be doing on top of the Unity engine, and why he's going to be able to do a one to one replica of the entire Earth that no one has been able to do before. And it's amazing technology watching it. And I went down the rabbit hole and watched about ten videos, and it like, and this was stuff that was seven eight years ago. So the technology has advanced immensely since then. Oh, so I definitely. can't even imagine what he's doing now. Yeah. And one thing I want to say really quickly, too, as far as the amount of information that's readily available for somebody like Wolfgang on their uh, LinkedIn, as a person in the professional world, LinkedIn is not the be all end all of where you put your every individual credit you've ever done, especially if you're somebody that has that sort of background. Look at Wolfgang's IMDB or something like that. You'll find a lot more in the way of his um, prior accomplishments. So don't use LinkedIn as the only sort of source of professional background on these folks yeah and for nathaniel his his uh linkedin is like two two jobs or two and <laughs> and a uh, drone. drone yep and if you if you go look at his unity store assets you can actually see the world the uh, world build i mean you can see the actual things that he's done and that's a much better indication of the kind of work that nathaniel's capable of right yeah and i think this just highlights the type of research that we all did before getting involved in the platform and that's why when things like that get called into question it's a little frustrating because we took a lot of time to find all this out already and we've kind of gotten past this so when we see yeah agree like, and videos yeah. come out like that you're just like come on guys we've yeah. we've been through this multiple and times. to us it's almost an insult because they're basically calling us stupid and uneducated and that we're we're morons for, for and taking think, this chance yeah and i think like one of the intentions of this video i imagine is is for the people that sell that to want to have more information regarding the truth of the platform or more in-depth background information on the developers of the platform. Yeah. Hopefully they can come here and find out some of that information that was really number one, just brushed over completely or wasn't located because they were researching outdated information to begin with. So, All right. And it's also for people that are unaware of Earth 2. Uh, yeah. I want this to be a evergreen video that people that see Earth 2 for the first time, they see all these videos saying scam. Well, here's one that says not a scam. Compare and contrast. Yep. No. See, see the solid evidence that we present versus evidence that is outdated and not really applicable. And I mean, we know that this is a risk. This is oh, not. Yeah. We're not saying at the end of the day that like anything that's brand new, where they're still in development, and you're putting money into it, is a risk. We know absolutely this is one of the most high risk things you get. But I mean, we've gotten past that point, and I think if you're if you're hammering that point solely, then you're not really speaking to the audience that's fully interested in this platform. You know, yeah, and this, this podcast that. and the website has been critical of Shane and company from day one, and we're Precisely. not going to stop being critical. Right. Uh, but we also are supportive of the vision they have and believe that they are taking the right steps, albeit not always communicating it properly or right taking the steps that we want them to take but they i think they know what they want to do and they're doing it the way they want to do it right yeah and i think that they, we we've done a, a decent job of attempting to stay objective in spite of our own investment and you know complement the things they do well and criticize the things that we feel are done poorly um but i i did want to move along and sorry sorry snoke i'm going to steal the transition <laughs> no worries there, there are some other employees that we at least wanted to briefly touch on, not necessarily as much as, you know, for lack of a better term, the, the big three we just covered. Um, but I'll just kind of jump in right away to um, Rolf C. Adam, who is a person, and again, any pronunciation that I've done poorly, I apologize for. 
Um, but he was brought on a bit later um, and has worked with Wolfgang on quite a few other game development projects. Um, so I'll just, I'll, I'll kick it over to, to the bowl combo again to start. Um, you know, what familiarity do you have with some of these folks? And, and we can transition through them pretty quickly. We don't need to spend a whole lot of time, but we do encourage folks to go out and do their own research. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, in terms of Ralph, I mean, uh, Farin and, and Dylan, um, I mean, I think they all have a pretty diverse set of backgrounds, clearly development and advisory at an advisory level. Um, I think Dylan's presence particularly brought a lot of confidence for me just because of his presence previously as an advisor on the Oculus board. I have an Oculus Quest too. I love it. And anyone that was involved in the development of that has to be a pretty heavy forward thinker. So I'm a big fan of that. I, and I think that his involvement specifically kind of gives some of the most weight to me of anyone involved, just because I don't think a person with that background and that's already experienced that level of success would bother tagging themselves along to anything like this unless they right. saw some real real uh, potential long term for it so i agree on that yeah. yeah that's my thoughts on it i don't really know much about ralph i do know farin has been working with uh or farin i hope i'm pronouncing that right has been working a lot with uh, nathaniel and did work with nathaniel on drone previously so uh, right and, and would be responsible for a lot of the the look of yeah. the world sort of the aesthetics yeah. of the world as opposed to like yeah, in-game mechanics or resource yeah. generation I think Shane even mentioned that one of the p pictures he took with the flag was something that Baran had put together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, like I agree with combo that Dylan's presence as someone that's been involved with a virtual reality uh, technology is important because eventually that is the vision they have is working with virtual reality. Uh, another person I think that's super important though, is the silent partner that our friend or two odyssey did a, very good video on uh, Tony Mary. He, he owns 50% partnership. He's a silent partner. He has no say in it, but he invested to get Earth 2 started. And the fact that someone that is a multimillionaire would take that chance on an unknown, to me, it says a lot. He's putting money into a project that he believes in. Uh, he's the CEO of Merck Capital. It's an Earth One real estate company. So he sees the potential with virtual real estate and the vision that Earth 2 has. And it's also indicative of more money invested in the project than, than even what the users have put in so far. Right. So, I mean, what do you think about that, Kenny, having someone like Tony Marion? Well, I think that it strengthens the idea that, you know, these, the people that are interested in this space are not just video game players. They're not just, you know, crypto or blockchain enthusiasts. We actually have folks from multiple backgrounds that are getting into this space. Um, I know people that are coming from a conventional financial services background and trying to get involved. And as we've already discussed with Jawad Khan with Republic Real Estate, there are other funds looking to invest in these metaverses. And yeah. Earth 2 is not even close to the only one. I mean, these folks have a lot more scam videos they'll have to make about things like Decentraland, you know, <laughs> because Earth 2 is far from the only one. So for me, investments from somebody, again, it's, it's almost the same comments I made about Shane as far as having prior successes, even if it's in a different industry, when those people put their confidence, whether it's both you know, financial, time, creative vision, whatever it may be, when you have those successful people putting their weight behind projects like this, it gives me a tremendous amount of confidence. I agree, 100%. Yeah. Yep. So, and I think just oh, one, one quick point to make on, in regards to like what you said with Republic, we're now, we're just now getting excited about the idea of blockchain and NFT. And that's something that companies were already looking at two, three, four years ago. You know what I mean? Like, so when we say, you know, they're behind or they're doing this, they're probably looking at technologies that we haven't even gotten to enjoy at a consumer level yet. And that's the way a company should be working. And I think that having someone like Dylan involved shows that they're looking ahead to that to positioning themselves properly because like we've said before and i think we've highlighted the whole ready player one aspect many times we know that's not going to be possible overnight but a company that's positioned themselves properly and has the proper architecture in place to take advantage when the technology drops to do something like that is probably going to be more successful than the company that's starting from scratch when that technology drops yeah so. and he, and dylan's not even the oven only advisor they have david nova novakovich and sebastian fair are also advisors and they have a uh, experience in their own art like david is a data scientist and sebastian's a, a programmer with a business mind 
so, I mean, they're not just looking in one area, they're attacking it from all different angles. Yep. And for example, I mean, just look at Steve Bennett, uh, one of the, one of the members of the team that's on the, our team page, uh, they obviously need to update that page a little bit better, but Steve Bennett is a Mapbox guru and we'll get into Mapbox a little bit later, but they're looking at segmenting the exact work they need to do. And they need someone that knows how to work with vector, vector tile generation with complex data sets. And that's what Steve Bennett does for them. Yeah, that's a good yeah, call. Absolutely. And we are going to dive into that a whole lot later. Um, but I think we've covered enough of the team for now. And I know that this next topic is something that Hazy is particularly passionate about. Um, and that is the concerns that have been voiced in some of these videos regarding terms, uh, terms of conditions. So Hazy, I'll just leave it up to you right to start. Go. Tell us All a little right. bit about your response to this. Well, and the reason I'm passionate about this is because it's frustrating for me to see people attacking the Earth 2 terms of conditions and not realizing that the language is boilerplate. It's commonplace language used throughout technology companies, banking companies, finance companies, fantasy sports companies, you name it, people use this language in their sites. Where are the videos attacking Blizzard? Here, here's, a, here's, a, here's a blurb from Blizzard on their limitation of liability. To the extent permitted by applicable law, in no event will Blizzard be liable, whether in contract warranty, tort, product liability, strict liability, or other theory to you or any other person or entity for any damages arising out of or in connection with any use of inability or use to result of use of this site or any materials or in this site, even if Blizzard or it is representative has been advised of the possibility of such damages. So you know what? That's pretty much word. That's almost an exact copy of the liability clause that Earth 2 has. And this isn't the only example. Are there some problems with the Earth 2 terms of conditions? Sure. They, it, it's clearly a copy paste. They have some places that are cut off. Uh, I actually forwarded those to a member of the dev team to kind of point out to them where there's some issues. So yeah, there is a problem with some of the way the terms and conditions are shown on the website. But I just wanna go into a, a few other things. So uh, just looking at some specific clauses that people have been attacking. Clause number one, we do not warrant the accuracy, adequacy, or completeness of the information on this website, nor do we undertake to keep this website updated. So people were saying, well, this means they don't have to do anything. Well, you know who else doesn't have to do anything? JP Morgan, the California Department of Consumer Affairs. They don't have to do anything. They have that clause on their page. Well, okay. We do not accept responsibility for loss suffered as a result of reliance by you on the accuracy or currency of information contained on this website. You know who uses this clause? Every law firm. I counted 28 law firms in the first three pages of Google searches I did on that search. 28 law firms use that clause. You think a law firm would use that if they were trying to uh, scam people? Uh, probably not. Just a hunt. Except, as expressly set out in these website terms or to the extent required by Knox, and this is the liability clause, so I'm not going to read that fully. And I already pointed out uh, Blizzard does it, but pretty much every YouTube has a liability clause that's similar to this. Where's the, the video saying uh, YouTube is a scam because of their terms of condition? There's not one. All right, two more, then I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Access to this web website may be withdrawn at any time without notice. These terms and conditions will survive any such withdrawal. And this was a big one. Oh, they can just pull up and leave. They can just d deny your access and, and run away. You know who else does this? DraftKings, Spotify, Capital One. So there's a fantasy sports giant that also does gambling, Spotify, a music giant, Capital One, a banking giant. You know, they can just close up shop whenever they want. But hey, Earth 2 is a scam. All right. Your noncompliance with any requests we make in relation to your account will result in suspension or termination of your account. Oh, they can terminate or suspend your account if you don't comply. You know who else can do that? Amazon and Google. So, that's what I'm saying. You're attacking a company for using language that giants use. Uh, don't be an internet lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I went to law school for two years, but I quit to play poker. So I, I'm not a lawyer. I have lawyer <laughs> friends. My mom was a lawyer. So I, I grew up with legal language in my house. So I understand how this stuff works. 
they're using this language to protect themselves from lawsuits. That is what the purpose of the terms of condition is. It isn't to protect you, the user. It's to protect the company. All I'm right, really, I'm, I'm done. Just, I'm excited at this point just to see the Jamie Dimon is a scam. Uh, Greenberg Trarig is a scam. I mean, go out there, guy. There's, you've given plenty of examples of other companies using the same language. So unless yeah, yeah go make some initial, content, guys. It's there for <laughs> there's you. There's a lot. There's a lot. So um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say on it. I think that you know you've done a fairly good job. But Snoke, do you have any other you know thoughts on this? Or or certainly Combo, if you want to jump in, I'll leave it. I know I'm doing that awful thing where I leave it to either one of you. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, real quick, I mean, it, it, it's it, like like Hazy said, it, it's language has been used in all these different startup companies, and yes, it is a startup company. And I'll I'll put it back to this. You know, you don't have to say it's a scam. If you want to invest in it, great. Invest what you can. If you don't, don't. Just go about your day. Don't bother mentioning making it a scam because you think it's a scam. No. Um, number one, I totally agree with Hazy. But number two, <clears throat> and I'm just going to leave everyone with this. I'm, I'm a big first-person shooter fan, so I play a lot of Apex Legends. And in order to unlock one of the heirlooms for one of the characters, it's about... 300 us dollars worth of apex packs per character and there's like you know 10 15 characters so i would be dumping well over three grand into a game that's probably not going to exist in seven years just to have these characters unlocked and all of us do this on the regular so when people say you're putting money into a platform that's going to be gone every gamer on the planet is constantly and this, the potential of this platform moving to blockchain just ensures that we probably wouldn't ever lose that land uh, but right now, we're just in the same situation as any other game on the planet. I mean, there's every other game on the planet, people pour thousands upon thousands of dollars into with the same terms of conditions, the same setup, and no one bats an eye at it. I mean, Apex Legends has 100 million players right now. Yeah. So I think that people put too much weight into something before they even understand it. And I think that the, the larger ecosystem has been going on for a really long time. And blockchain is just really going to ensure stricter ownership of that. So... I think I just wanted to leave people with that, that when people see terms of service and they think that this company is going to run away with all your money, any company can, any game can. If a game shuts down tomorrow, if World of Warcraft shut down tomorrow because, you know, the Chinese government didn't like what they were doing suddenly, then they're done. You know what I mean? And that's just the way it is. Yeah. And like I, like I said, the terms of condition protects them. Exactly. And exactly. I mean, as a business, I think it's a smart thing to do. That's why you create limited liability corporations. You protect it to limit the liability against you from individuals who are lawsuit happy uh, yeah that, that's an extremely good point like this is uh, this is why people have llcs instead of sole proprietorships and things like that right so that you have some separation of your per you, this is not an uncommon business tactic no well it's funny that bull combo brings that up because for example call of duty they come out with a game every couple of years and for example, the last one was uh, Modern Warfare, and I know me personally, I've probably spent a couple thousand in that game on characters and every every season getting a, a new person or something like that. And yeah. I, I have uh, Cold War right now, and none of that transferred over. So yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, all right, well, goodbye, um, old game. <laughs> Let's do it again. Games, I play Hearthstone. I've been a legend on Hearthstone. Yep. And I buy packs. I buy their expansion packs every time they come out. Yep. Do, do I get anything back for that? No, I, I yep. do it because I like to play the game. Right. And I mean, yes, is there two different kind of concept? We're actually investing in virtual real estate, but it's also a game. Uh, we're doing an economic simulation right now, if you want to see it that way. That's the way I see it right now. I mean, I know Kangi and I, we, we flip tiles like you wouldn't believe it. Like if we wanted to, we could sell our land right now at a significant loss to market value and we would both profit substantially yeah i so, mean you only you only invest what you can afford to lose exactly. you know, i go to vegas sometimes and i put like an eight team baseball uh like eight different baseball teams in a single parlay bet which you will basically never win but you put forty dollars down you could theoretically win a thousand you won't but <laughs> that's what i've decided in that scenario i am right. willing to risk and you know then i can go sit in the sports book bring my 32 ounce booze slushy over from fat Tuesdays and have a good time watching like six baseball teams 
until you know like Bryce Harper breaks my heart in the eighth yeah. or something. You know? And we're 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 having a good time putting our flipping tiles, buying. Hey, this is an interesting plot of land. You know what? No one's putting a gun to our head, making us spend our money buying these tiles. We all are adults, and we all make this choice. So we are aware of the risk we are taking. Absolutely. Uh, and and like let's get to another concern. Uh, withdrawals. Uh, that pretty much every video attacked. Oh, you can't. You can deposit your money easily, but you can't withdraw. Have there been withdrawal issues referred to? Absolutely. Yep. And they use Matt Lorian's video from January, which just drives me absolutely nuts because it's outdated information. And they attack this poor kid for quoting all this stuff about, oh, you need to provide your name, your address, your your routing number, your bank. Well, how else are you going to get money out if you're yeah. doing a bank transfer? You think well, they're just going to magically send? You have to give them that kind of information. But I digress well, because Earth 2, is that's been one of their focuses. They yeah. want to be able to give people their money. Yep. They've, they've tried many different methods. They're working on the Earth 2 MasterCard. They're working. Uh, they have a trial system with the paid to credit card and debit card. Is there still problems with it? Yeah. But you, you know what? They care and they're yeah. working on it. It's not a problem they're ignoring. And one thing I really want to, since we, we quickly jumped on this topic, I, I do want to mention it. I find it deeply ironic sometimes when people criticize you know, the need to provide that sort of banking information and personal information and people want like DeFi, they want crypto. Yeah. Well, what facilitates a scam or a rug pull better than crypto, right? Yeah. I, I don't understand how those, those two ideas seem to be at odds with one another. You should actually feel a bit more confident that they do things like OFAC checks and make sure that there's not money laundering happening on the platform because those types of things are what would sink the platform, right? It, strictly yeah. illegal sort of financial and actions. That was one of the reasons the withdrawals were taking so long because they were doing thorough checks because of the, mon the money laundering concerns. Right, absolutely. And as far as you know, modern withdrawal concerns, I can at least speak to my own experience, which is I did the withdrawal to debit card a couple of months ago. I took out 2,100 bucks. Uh, it took about nine days from my withdrawal request to the actual deposit. Um, admittedly, a lot of banks do have some hard times doing the payout to a card, but I think that there are a lot of options people have found to work with that while we wait for the Earth 2 uh, physical card, or Earth 2 MasterCard, is that the proper yeah. nomenclature? Um, <laughs> but it worked for me. I got money back. I very yeah. much spent it. You know, my dogs I, keep getting sick and going to the vet, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. some of those. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did two withdrawals, two credit card. Uh, I three three my debit cards didn't work, so I, I used a credit card that did work, and I did two different withdrawals: one as a test, and one to just kind of recoup the money I did on the Great Land Rush of April twenty first. Uh, basically, took out the money that I put in to buy new tiles. Uh, I know you two are probably holders, Combo and Snoke, so you probably haven't done withdrawals yet, have you? I haven't I, done a withdrawal, but seeing E two the boss pull out eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, me, yeah, you know. that's another. I mean, and. Uh, Eighty thousand dollars. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. One of, one, of the, one of the Discord mods, Rolo, I think his name is. He did yes. fifty thousand. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And and post of the receipts. You know, this yeah. is not. These are like very much. We had evidence that that absolutely happened. Yeah. I mean, E two the boss disappeared, but he disappeared with eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Ball don't lie. That's a conversation for another pod, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, is there a game to be played, Snoke? You know, not uh, you said earlier about this about the economic uh, simulator. Uh, that's kind of what it is right now. But right now, no, there is definitely not a game. Now, it is uh, possible though, and it's pretty ambitious to be, as they say, Ready Player One. But I personally believe in a couple years it can be. Um, and I know right now that was one of the. Uh, points that they were bringing up was like, what is the game? Well, there's so much speculation on what the game could be right now, but I'm I'm excited for it. Uh, Bull uh, combo. What are you What are you excited about for what the possibilities of the game can be? Well, I mean, I think just like the initial project was announced, anything like this is going to be phased. So if you think that we're going to go straight from tile buying to floating around and Ready Player One then you're sadly mistaken. And I think that's people get too literal. And I think that goes back to needing something to, to back their argument. 
well, they say, well, you can't do Ready Player One right now. Well, of course you can't do Ready Player One right now. <laughs> you, can, you can do a lot of things up to that point. And I think people also, it takes a little bit of knowledge when it comes to, you know, how games are currently structured. I mean, you can play Call of Duty Warzone and there's 150 players in the lobby that you're playing with. And that's, that's on the small scale of some games. I've seen, you know, 1,200, 1,500 player lobbies. And I think people really expect it to have to be this open world where you can move from, you know, Spain to America in one fail swoop. But I don't think that's going to, that's how it has to be. You can, you can definitely break things down and compartmentalize things and create, you know, location-based servers and persistent servers that, that load certain parts of an area or a country or a city based on the volume of load and performance. So I think that there's ways to get to a level of gameplay that's super engaging and would absolutely be everything that we would enjoy, at least for now, while we get to that final point. So is the game possible? 100%. I mean, there's, it's, it's 100% possible. The technology is there right now to create a game that we would all absolutely love as is without even being VR or AR capable. I mean, if they gave us the ability to build from a above ground 3D perspective and harvest our resources and sell that land and show off those buildings, that would be enough to get people excited for what's to come. You know what I mean? And I think mm-hmm. it's very much a phased positioning. Yeah. And I, th- I think that's what phase two is going to be. And that's why so right. many of us are excited for it. They're going to have the in-game building editor. Uh, Nathaniel just last week was talking about how you're going to be able to edit the terrain, put road plots down, put grass down. You're going to be able to do that yourself. You're going to have some customization. So we're going to be able to mine these resources, put up these buildings, trade these resources, sell these properties that have these unique buildings on it. It's going to change the scope of the game as we see it. It's going to become a more advanced. It's going to be like a sim, kind of like a sim city, basically. Precisely. Yeah. And then we transition into phase three. And Kangi, I know you have some examples of games that are already kind of immersive virtual reality games. So kind of explain that a little bit and how we can see Earth 2 transitioning to that in the future. Absolutely. And I own a PSVR, so not the highest quality or most sort of name brand virtual reality system. I think that, you know, Oculus is probably a better example of, of maximizing that platform. But like games, and I, I have just a few that either me or my brother have played that found like particularly immersive. Um, Blood and Truth was a great game. Moss is a great game. Uh, Trover Saves the Universe, Astrobot. Um, I also think an interesting one to bring up is actually No Man's Sky, because that's a, a good example of a game that when released, um, and this is certainly not a structure you want to emulate, but it let some folks down. But what did they do? Continue to work on the game, continue to add new elements. And now there's actually even a VR component within No Man's Sky. Um, and the game has gone, it's now a, a fairly critically acclaimed game in its current state. Um, there's really, really good boxing games on multiple VR yep. platforms as well that I think do a good job of at least making you move within the environment, albeit, you know, not necessarily, again, where you could run around in a Ready Player One type sense. Um, I've definitely played some disappointing ones too. Like I found the Rick and Morty VR game pretty shitty. Uh, I thought it was bad. Um, but that's going to happen with any, I mean, that happens with normal video games that they've been making for 50 years too. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't actually have video game can yeah. happen all the time. I haven't actually done any VR uh, gaming. Have you Snoke? I have, I, I, as Kangy said, you know, I have a PSVR as well. And most of those games I played, I played some other ones like uh, walking dead. I, that's one of my favorite games to play on there because you can just literally walk around and like you can grab people and take an ax and just chop their head off. <laughs> yeah. Pretty wild. Yeah, so I mean, but uh, there's also like Beat Saber, which is a fun game. There's a lot of games out there that are, they're still in the works. I mean, the VR technology is so new still. I mean, it's only been out for maybe last, maybe, dec- yeah, I, w- I would say maybe up to a decade at the farthest point. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I'm excited for what's to come. And especially, uh, hey, I know uh, this is your part, but uh, with bodysuits, there's a company out there right now that's actually making a whole um the haptic bodysuits yeah well well it's not just the bodysuit it's a, it's a whole like platform where they you can run on and in any direction and something like that those pieces we would need if we were to maybe do like a fully infer- inversive vr experience so i'm excited for those companies that are creating those pieces as well yeah, yeah, I mean, my, my experience with VR is basically just researching it for in relation to Earth 2. 
So Combo, what do you know about VR? How do you think it's going to play in? And we haven't really even talked about augmented reality, which I think is ready now. We can do that now. And that's going to be a big part of phase two, I think. So Combo, kind of let us know how you think about augmented reality and virtual reality and where that's going to come into play with the game game itself well obviously it's definitely going to be a phase a while before we see the ar and vr aspect of it and i think just because it's going to be a while before we can find that to be implemented in a performance optimized way um i do have an oculus quest too so i have some experience with with the vr gaming specifically for me i'm more looking forward to ar augmented reality and that's because for me vr gives me motion sickness sometimes especially mm -hmm. if i'm standing up because my if I'm standing up while I'm doing it, my brain just can't register the fact that the ground looks different than the actual ground. <laughs> so after a while, I get like the weird, like, you know, like seasickness from it. So I've had to learn to sit down when I play it. So I think AR uh, augmented reality will probably lend itself better for me because I can stay a little bit more grounded, so to speak. Yeah. And I've, um, I've done AR with Pokemon Go. So I, I, yeah. I have done AR. Yeah. I think AR will... While it's possible, I do think it's still further out from a consumer perspective than VR is, obviously, because we already have the Oculus thing and stuff like that, but we don't really have something that works at the Oculus quality level from an AR perspective yet. I know Vuzix is close. Um, they have a new Vuzix uh, headset coming out this year. They're actually based in Rochester, which is a couple hours from me, so I've been following them pretty heavily, and I think they might be one of the first companies to push AR into the, like, the consumer space like that at a mainstream level. And then, you know, you got Snap and Facebook working on things too. Apple's yeah. working on one. So yeah. it's coming. It's coming here in the next five years. It's going to be. What was so, that? Snoke, Snoke, what do you think one of the problems with using VR technology is going to be? Well, I mean, the biggest one is cost. It's, yeah. uh, I think that the, the cost of VR is, I mean, for anybody to actually get a VR system or augmented uh, reality system as well. It's, it's going to take a lot. And as I said earlier, with the running uh, machine that they're creating, I mean, you can invest in it. It's like you have to invest at least a thousand dollars to invest into that. And they're going to start selling them at like six grand per, per, per unit. So to have that, um, I, I think that's one of the biggest things and the technology, like to make it perfect. Like I think even after they release it, I think that they still have to tune it and keep tuning it until they get it perfectly fit. What do you think, Kingy? Yeah. I mean, and speaking to Jawad Khan about this, I know he always referenced that, that uh, podcast a lot, but there was a lot of content in there that I think was important. And he did say that the technology needs to be made both, more it needs to be more cost effective to make so that it's you know more folks actually have access to these things because right now there's a huge cost barrier and it needs to be a less obtrusive technology like the psvr headset it's it, it functions great but it is very bulky um yeah. so so making things that are maybe closer to the size of a pair of sunglasses which yeah. we're a ways off from but there are so many companies working towards that that i do laugh when people talk about that kind of thing like it's decades away. I really think that we are going to have much more effective, you know, I don't know about when the cost comes down, but certainly the, the size and quality of product is going to improve, I think, at a much faster rate. I mean, think about cell phones 20 years ago. They, yeah. they, were, they were that big. Right. They're also and that wasn't expensive. that long ago. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, and look at television. Televisions, yeah. like when uh, they used to be monsters and when the flat screens first came out, they were two, three thousand dollars to get a flat screen. Now you can get one for five hundred dollars. Get one so for I'm, a couple hundred if you're going cheap and going fairly. Yeah, cheap. but I'm just saying that <laughs> yeah. the, tech, yeah, I know what you the mean. technology changes quickly and so do the prices. So as mm -hmm. as people, this is a smart world we're living in. Yep. Uh, the technology is going to get there and the prices are going to come down. Uh, so I want to transition into a way people make money on Earth, too. Uh, and I think this is something we all agree is a little bit of a problem. I think it's, uh, I, I think we all understand the concept of referral codes. And this is something that all of the scam videos attack. Uh, oh, look, they're, they're trying to suck you at the Ponzi scheme. They're suckering you in with this free money. And yeah, uh, it is free money, but it's not really significant in, in the long term. Uh, what it is doing is it, it's rewarding the people that are coming in now. And Shane has said, it's not going to be here forever. It is a temporary thing. And I think we need to take that to, to heat. Uh, enjoy it while you can. Uh, it's, it's a reward for early adopters, basically. 
Well, uh, and it's not it's not significant. It's only on new land tile purchases. Kingy and I spend most of our money on the marketplace. We don't get a cent for doing that. Yep. We're we're just we're just feeding easy money snipers some money. <laughs> Absolutely. But bull combo, how do you feel about this? Like, do you do you agree with Hazy that it's a bit of a, for lack of a better term, an icky concept to have referral codes? Uh, I mean, I think the concept's okay. I think the execution is where it was flawed a little bit. One because. Um, it can just be used over and over again. I think if they put some sort of limit, like a one-time thing or something like that, it would make it seem a little bit more valued because you can just continuously use a person's code over and over again. It just seems like it's fabricating money out of thin air, so to speak, over and over again. And that's confusing for people to understand. So that for starters, and then the fact that people just like spammed the crap out of it when it first came out, it was almost like people cared more about the referral code than the platform itself. And so from that perspective, I think it was done a little prematurely or there should have been some sort of yeah. process for which you had to be approved to have a referral code. Like you and, had to and, buy a certain amount of land or be on the platform a certain length of time or something. I like, like that. that. Yeah. Just, uh, and I think that was probably what caused the problem. I feel like referral codes now are less of a problem now that the platform is really established. I mean, if they got rid of them tomorrow, I would, would not hate the idea nope. at all. One of the things they did attack was the fact that Matt Lorian and the guy he Matt, the guy that Matt Lauren referred to as getting a payout through that complicated system, they both use their referral code a bunch in their videos. Uh, I know we don't actually list our referral code. It's one place somewhere on the website, but it's kind of buried. We never post it on the videos. We don't really care. Um, we're not here to try to get, we want people to play the game, but you don't have to use our referral code. If no. you have a question, we're not going to say use our referral code. Uh, well, I also, th you already touched on this, that outside of Korean mega cities that have recently sprouted up or another like the Joker's mega city, um, and maybe the occasional, you know, new person coming in, since we aren't seeing that many new tile sales compared to the marketplace, it's almost not even that relevant yeah. anymore. Right. I mean, it's already kind of a dated concern. Yeah, yeah the um, only time it really comes into play now is if they're going to release uh, like a, a UAE release, then yes. it would come into play. Yes, very good point. Very good point. Yeah, but uh, Snoke, I know one thing that you wanted to talk about was like <laughs> the the main page does show percentage increases on like the value, and uh, that's also a little bit deceiving in the way it's presented, right? Yeah, I, to be honest, I think it should have you know like um, the biggest risers, the, the, the biggest losers, yeah, yeah, or yeah, just to list the tile price on you know what it is. So I think there could be a lot of con uh, changes that could be made there as well. Um, and I, I do hope maybe eventually it will, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause right now it shows percentage growth since basically the site was started. Exactly. Yeah, so what, what is the USA helpful. right now? Like 58, 58 million or something? thousand percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some, whatever. However many number of zeros, whereas a more useful, you know, that's not how websites like market watch show, you know, yeah, show, how, show how much it increased in the last week today. A day. Yeah, yeah, yeah day. exactly. A day, you know, a week. Our biggest movers. And we also know that a country that hasn't been selling tiles will actually decrease in value. So show the biggest losers too. I mean, yeah. show it in a bit more of an objective way. For and sure. I, I know there are other stat sites that show this, but I do agree. I think that earth two should put that on their main page on to, Kind right, of it, shouldn't, it shouldn't require new users to go to a third-party website yeah. to access what, that what's information. What's your take on that combo? I think it's just a hyper-growth problem. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it was something that they created at the time to get people involved. Yeah. But now it's kind of showing its age. And I think a lot of things on the site are showing their age, and I think that's just part of a brand new platform like this. I mean, we know that they're already in the process of working on the site and updating everything in it, and I think that that's just one of the reasons why, because the game changed you know what i mean when it was created i think anyone comes comes into something with their own intentions but people are going to use it how they want to use it you right. know what i mean and so i'm sure that they had an intention on what they wanted earth 2 to be but people came in and they used it how we were going to use it and those they, then they have to react based on those trends you know what i mean so it's a, a balancing act of fixing the platform fixing the back end stuff keeping the users engaged updating everything all the verbiage on the site it's it's a constant battle and i think it just goes back to the fact we're only six months into this so a lot can happen in a very short <laughs> period so 
So, yeah, that's my thoughts there. I think it's just short period of time, hyper growth. And I think a lot of these things will probably be ironed out here over the next few months, at least in terms of like the verbiage and stuff like that. I, I agree. And I think that kind of is also how it brings into another point on people saying, oh, it's just Google Maps. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> now, I know, you know, when uh, we originally, like, when Chain announced that we were working with Mapbox, I mean, it was, a, it was a big deal because Mapbox is a very reputable company that, I mean, if you actually do a compare of Mapbox, like, like even just Earth 2 Engine and look at a place, like, pull up an address in Earth 2 and then pull it up in Google Maps, you'll see a clearly distinct difference. Yeah. Um, and even like my house alone, for example, um, my house alone, the yard used to be a lot smaller and it, it, it's, we increased the size of the backyard and you could see that in Earth too, but you cannot see that in Google maps. And so th there is a, the satellite imagery is a lot different. And I, I think that a lot of people just say, Oh, it's just Google maps. What, what are your thoughts on this bull combo? Uh, well, first off, I think the Google maps thing is more a sarcastic address. Uh, more sarcastically addressing the lack of gameplay but i do think like for one i did a video that highlights mapbox i did it a few weeks back and i kind of highlighted all of the functionality and capabilities of it and i think that's probably something that people should watch if they want to understand why the platform was built on mapbox to begin with because it's not just the glorified uh google maps by any means it's a completely different style platform that has a lot of capabilities it makes a lot of sense especially in terms of what the user interface is that they need right now. I mean, people are buying land and they need something that can properly display that. So Mapbox makes a lot of sense. And I, I just think, yeah, going back to the Google Maps thing, it was really just a sarcastic reference to the lack of gameplay. More yeah, but they, they all keep a, they all keep using it. So it, yeah. it kind of it has us. to be addressed. It has to be yeah. addressed for sure. And I think maybe, maybe educating and pointing them, like I said, to that like Mapbox video and more information about Mapbox will help and just letting them understand why a platform like this would rely on any sort of mapping yeah. tool in general. And you know yeah. who else uses Mapbox? Snapchat. Snapchat yep. uses Mapbox. CNN. A lot of companies. A lot of companies use Mapbox. It's an extremely powerful tool. And so for that reason, my wife and I like to go hiking. We use all trails. Guess who uses Mapbox? All trails. Yeah, absolutely. I highly recommend anybody that wants to know more about Mapbox. One, absolutely watch Combo's video. And two, go to the actual mapbox.com website yeah. and go to the, it's, it's a customers tab. It'll, it's also mapbox.com slash showcase. And it'll show all of the, well, at least the most high profile partnerships they have, as well as the details as far as what they actually do for that company. So, you know, as far as that being a sticking point for Earth 2, Mapbox is probably the part of this that I would doubt the least. Yeah, that's and just you know, my opinion. You know, one of the companies that's in that showcase, Earth Two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and another thing is, uh, people got to understand that the game itself will not be played on Mapbox. Right. They're exactly. they're going to be creating that as well. So I think a lot of people will say, "Oh, it's just a game on buying and selling tiles." Well, yeah, right now, but it, it, it's going to be moved away from this. Right. And you need and, a lot of partnerships to make this whole thing run. Exactly. So before, I, before I move into the outro, I don't want to digress. <laughs> you know who who is not on Mapbox? After Earth. Just <laughs> you know Shot who fire. is a scam, probably? After Earth. Well, you know, that's the only reason why After Earth's not the target is because they aren't getting the popularity Earth 2's getting. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, you can, you can call it whatever you want, but there's not... 250,000 morons on the planet willing to dump $10,000 into something unless there's some legitimacy and potential to it. You know what I mean? Well, sorry. Right. And, and I mean, we've, we've speculated why these scam videos came out. I mean, it's because Earth, Earth 2 is gaining popularity and it's yep. because maybe someone coordinated an attack. I mean, to me, the timing of, and I don't want to get too much in depth on this, but the timing of it seems very suspicious. And the, the fact that one after the other are using the same, they're all using the same stuff. Yeah, they're using I, the Matt Lorian video. They're using the, it's Google tiles. They're using withdrawal problems from three months ago. They're using the same material. So to me, it's very suspicious. It's very much like anyone that covers any space. Like, you know, me and Meta and Randy or Aria, when something happens, we all do a video on it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it's the exact same thing with them. One of them, they all are in the same similar community. They all cover the same similar topics one of them has a topic hey that's a great topic for me to cover too i'm going to cover it and that's yep. really what's happening here unfortunately no one's really doing any research on it they're all just pulling the same points hammering the same points home which is why we're doing this video precisely, right now. precisely precisely yep. and hopefully i mean 
the odds of us getting reaching the same number of people that they are reaching, unfortunately, is slim to none. But more we spam comment this link on every single video. We just we just want people to, if they are going out and doing their own research, to find this and come across this and understand that there are people who wholeheartedly believe in the platform and have done a ton of research, and we want to share that with you guys. So if we win, if if the video wins over one heart slash mind, I think it's a success. You know, right? I think we're fighting fighting a torrent of bad information yeah. here but if we can educate a few people it's it's a w yeah and we man. encourage people to ask questions too if you're not absolutely sure, ask us a question comment on the video say well how does this work well how does that work we might not have the answers to that but we might you know and it will we'll try to find or point you in the right direction yeah and you know that's the most we can do for you guys and right i mean and, and we'll shout out combos combos videos uh we'll link his youtube in the in the bottom he has a lot of great information there also we'll shout out our own website up too right Yep. Yeah, you, I'm gonna be yeah, he's going to be tomorrow, working right? on a series of videos dealing with this exact topic. Yeah, tomorrow we're going to be touching on the possibility of just creating a metaverse in general. And we're going to be looking at some examples of existing ones, some of the existing technology that's out there. And, uh, you know, what, what is possible and what isn't. I know we discussed it a little bit on this pod today, but I'm going to be doing a deep dive into a lot of the different server technologies and things like that. So, yep, that's so going to be exciting. exciting. And we also have a learning learning two section on on the my name is human pod.com website yeah. a lot of great resources there i'm probably i'm going to throw this video in that section there because i think it's something you can use to learn and we understand that there are going to be people that don't find this possible and are always going to be in doubt you know yep. i still have some doubts i still have some questions i, I know that it's possible a year from now i'll look back and like damn i fucked up <laughs> yeah we, yeah we might look we might look very foolish it's admittedly right. a highly speculative investment um but i do think there's something to be said about a lot of good people on the side of earth too as well as at least decently educated people that are buying up tiles and, and why they believe in a project like this in yeah. spite of its risk yeah. yeah and i mean and i think that's all we need to understand is that we don't need to attack a company for having an innovative ideal and trying to do something different just because it's a concept that seems unplug- ambitious, uh, ambitious, overly ambitious. Yep. You know, there were companies in the past that were overly ambitious and look where they are now. I mean, if you don't take chances, you're, you're uh, it's like my favorite uh, quote from rounders talks about, like uh, if you don't if you don't take a chance, you're just never going to get anywhere. And like that's always been kind of my motto. Uh, I've taken chances in life and I failed. See, I could have also- sworn I could have sworn you were going to go with the you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take. Quote Wayne Gretzky. Quote Michael Scott. That one works too, though. It's, right. It's, yeah, it's, it's applicable. I mean, yeah. so yeah. I mean, just is there to a risk? Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, life is a risk. And I think we just need to look at it, go into it with an open mind, do the research, do the due diligence. And if you believe in it and you feel comfortable with it, then take that shot. If you don't, then go do something else. I mean, that's the thing. This is a free world. You can choose to play or to the game which is an economic simulation, however you want to call it right now. <laughs> right. You can choose to play it or you can choose to go, but don't waste your time with hate. Don't waste yeah. your time trying to tell people what to do with their lives. They can make their own decisions. And that's what I'm ultimately trying to say. We're just here to educate. We're just here to try to tell people, look, not things aren't as bad as others make it seem to be. Here's the reason why. So we're just showing and we're not saying Earth 2 is perfect. It's not. But we're showing you some of the things that show you why Earth 2.0 is not a scam. Combo, thoughts? No, that, that wraps it up perfectly. Like I said, guys, if you have questions on this, reach out to us, comment on the video, ask your questions. Like like uh, Hazy just mentioned, you know, we don't, we aren't saying that this isn't a risk. We know it's a risk. Anything like this is a risk, but this is something that we're willing to do and we're not telling anybody to do it. We mostly cover this from a game perspective. Most of us are really excited about the platform and the features that are coming out. We're not saying pour hundred thousand dollars into this tomorrow and you're going to get rich because that's not what our intentions are necessarily long-term even with earth too. So, because we understand that there's so much more potential to this platform. So just understand that there's a lot of moving parts to this, but just because something seems foreign doesn't mean it's illegitimate. It's just, you have to understand something and yep. we understand it's not for everyone. Virtual yep. land's not for everyone and it's not going to be for everyone. And that's totally fine. 
Yep. Snoke. Yeah, you know, thank you so much, uh, Pull Combo, for being on the show. You know, and for everyone that's watching, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that. Uh, make sure you comment on the video. Make sure you hit subscribe. Thank you. Yeah, and we don't even care if you dislike. Uh, you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> views are good for the YouTube we're, algorithm. We're, we're getting we're we're getting a few more of those dislikes. If, if yeah, you made it this we, far, if you made it this far, then you can you earn the right to dislike the video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, the the what the view time went way up if you right. made it this far. Absolutely. All right, Kenny, you have anything to add? No, the last thing, I, I just want to echo what, what Combo had said. I'm in this because I grew up playing video games with my brother and my friends, and I, I came to this platform in the hopes to be a part of a really revolutionary game. Um, you can look at my profile and see what I have for sale versus what I don't. I am in this far more for the game concepts than the economic reasons. So that's yeah. just me. Well, uh, we do appreciate it. Ho hope everyone has had a happy Memorial Day. Uh, thank you. For the past veterans that have uh, served our country, we do appreciate that, and we, we remember you in our hearts. Uh, this has been a Earth2.io podcast brought to you by My Name is Human Podcast, MyNameIsHumanPod.com. Like Snoke said, comment, like, subscribe, and we will get back to your – I try to answer every comment. Uh, I always try to make sure. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching. Uh, that's all I got. Hazy out. Kangi out. Snow out. Rabo out. <laughs>